Okay, so here are two lines, and we, we already showed that these two lines are skew in a previous example. Now we want to figure out what is the sort of minimum distance between those two lines. So we need to first find a couple of vectors. W, this um, sort of P2 minus P1. Um, so what are those? That, well, so P2, we are, are reading off the position coordinates for the first line. So minus 2, 3, 5. And then the position coordinates for the second line now there's a 0. There is 0 plus t. So it's 1, 2, 0. So we get um, minus 3, 1, 5. Okay. So that's our, our vector that starts on one line and ends on the other. Now we need this vector which is orthogonal to both of the lines, right? And in particular, it's orthogonal to the two direction vectors. So we're going to use cross product to get that. So v1, we look at the coefficients here, 3, minus 1, 1. Right? Coefficients of t. And then for v2, we look at the coefficients of s, 4, 1, 2. Okay. And we're going to work out that cross product. I'm going to skip the, the arithmetic steps this time just to kind of move things along here. I mean, I'll say them, but I won't write them. Minus 2 minus 1 is minus 3. And then we have 6 minus 4. That's 2. And then for k, we've got 3 minus minus 4. So 3 plus 4 is 7. So we get minus 3 minus 2, and 7, okay? All right, so if we want to use the, the distance formula, then we just calculate the projection. So it's the projection of w onto n. So that is n dot w over n dot n times n. So that is going to be, if you take the dot product of the two vectors, um, 9 minus 2 plus 35. So 35 plus uh, 7 is 42. And then n dot n, 49 plus 4, we're at 53 plus 9 um, gets us to, is it 62? Yeah, 60, 42 over 62, um, or if we like uh, 21 over 31. Oh, times the vector, of course. Um, times n. So 21 over 31 times minus 3, minus 2, and 7. And, oh, and the distance, of course, is not the vector, but the magnitude. So we have that. Magnitude there. Right? And, well, that is going to be that 62 again, right? Um, okay, so, so maybe it would have been better to leave it there with the, so it's 42 times root 62 over, so 42 over the square root of 62, and you can clean that up if you are so inclined. Um, okay, um, so if you just want the distance, stop there. Um, if that's the only part you care about, you can stop the video now and, and you don't go any further. Um, if you're curious about how do we actually find the points on the line, well, let me, let me see if I can figure this out. Uh, I've got to see if I can remember how to do this. It's, it's harder than you might think. Um, okay, so Q1 minus Q2. Um, I think, do we do it that way? Um, trying to remember how this should work. Let's see. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here's how we can do it. 
So that point Q1, whatever it is, right? Um, Q1 has to be, well, because it's on the first line, right? It's given by the equation of the first line. It has to be um, 1, 2, 0 plus t times uh, 3 minus 1, 1 for some t, right? Q2 has to be minus 2, 3, 5 plus s times uh, 4, 1, 2. All right? Okay. Now, um, Q1, Q2, if I take the difference, um, um, so let's do Q2 minus Q1. Put that over here. So subtracting them, I'm going to get um, minus 2 minus 1. I get minus 3, and then I get 6, or sorry, 3 minus... Ah, multiply, come on. 3 minus 2 is 1, 0. 5 minus 0 is 5. And, and then I'm going to get kind of 4s minus 3t. And then I'm going to get s plus t. And finally, I'm going to get um, 2s minus t, All right? So we know that q1 is on L1, so it has to look like that for some t. q2 is on L2, so it has to look like that for some s. Um, so we know the line kind of, it has to look like that, right? Um, so, so this vector has to look like that for some values of s and t, um, all right? And we also know that it, it has to be parallel to the normal vector. So in particular, um, it has to be orthogonal to the two vectors, v1 and v2. Um, and so what we would do is we'd say, okay, so um, v1 dotted with q2 minus q1 um, would have to be equal to 0. And v2 dotted with q2 minus q1 would have to be equal to 0. Both those dot products would have to be equal to 0. I'm running out of board space here, but let's, let's see what we do. Let's try it. Okay, so v1 is here. v1 is um, 3 minus 1, 1. Okay. Um, so we'd have to have 3 times minus 3 plus 4s minus 3t. And then minus 1 times 1 plus s plus t. And then 1 times uh, 5 plus 2s minus t. And so I'm going to try to clean that all up. There's going to be uh, 12s minus s plus 2s, so altogether I think that's 13s. Uh, and then minus 9t, minus 10t, minus 11t, and then constants, minus 9, minus 10, plus 5, minus 5, and that would have to equal 0. Okay, so we get that equation, and then we would take this vector, and now we're going to dot it with v2. So we get 4 times minus 3 plus 4s minus 3t. And then we get um, 1 times 1 plus s plus t. And then we get 2. And, and by the, I'm not going to solve these equations. I'm just going to set them up so you know kind of where you would go from here. Uh, 16s, 17s plus 4 more. 21s, okay, uh, minus 12t. 
minus 11, oh, and then minus 2, minus 13t, and then constants, minus 12, minus 11, oh, and then 10. Okay, so that actually, uh, so, so that's 10, 11, minus 12, minus 1 equals 0. Okay, um, so you get those two equations, two unknowns. Solve by whatever means you prefer for solving two equations and two unknowns. They're not particularly pleasant. Um, but that would let you get the values for s and t. Plugging the value for s into here gives you the point q2. Plugging the value for t into here would give you the point q1. Um, and then if you wanted to, you could plug both values into here, get the vector q2 minus q1. And of course, that vector should equal the one that you find here. Right? And finding the magnitude should give you that distance that you're looking for. Um, so if you want to, you can go through that process. It is certainly more complicated than what we saw finding the distance from a point to a line, um, but it's doable.